had a medical doctor come by, I hope you're not going to forget all of the babies I delivered, right? And reminded me that all week long, there's this, there is this uh, midwife versus the hospital thing, and many have come to the conclusion that there's a beautiful melding of the two uh, together that can happen. And so as I talk about a midwife this morning, we're talking about anyone, I guess, who comes along and uh, assists in the birthing process. And for the record, all of three of my kids were delivered in a hospital by a doctor, and all three had severe complications. <laughs> what else did the lawyers want us to say there, Keith? All right. In the 22nd Psalm, in the Old Testament of the Bible, the Hebrew poet writes of God these words, and to think you were midwife at my birth, setting me at my mother's breasts. When I left the womb, you cradled me. Since the moment of birth, you've been my God. God was a midwife to this person. What a lovely image. And what a humble, humble God that he would inspire the writer of Holy Writ, this psalm, to describe him, the one who made the universe, birthed everything in these terms. Makes me want to know what a midlife, midwife, midlife crisis, midwife is like so that I can know more about who God is and what God is like. So what is a midwife? I learned a lot this week. A midwife is with the mother. They call it the birthing year from shortly after pregnancy to weeks after the delivery of the child. They're with the mom through the whole birthing process. So if the labor goes for two days, they're with you for two days. They don't leave your side. No shift changes, no intermittent visits from an obstetrician. They're with the mom physically, really physically, wrapping their arms around them, holding them, lifting them up, massaging them, touching them, engaging in a very physical way. And they're there with them emotionally, reminding a mom and a dad and a family of their strength, stepping back when you need to step back, giving space. A midwife has, when properly trained and having the expertise, all kinds of training and, and, and history with this act of giving birth and brings that, knows that there are many different ways and timings for the delivery of a child. A midwife is with a mom in terms of believing in her innate capacity to de deliver a child and her strength as a woman. Like a doctor, like anybody who assists in childbirth and loves that moment, they esteem the birthing process. And they say things like this from a video I watched this week, watched 18 childbirths this week. Wow. <laughs> Wow to women. I, I have been bringing coffee to my wife and serving her breakfast in bed, and she's not here, so I could make up a whole list of false things. In the video, midwives and people in the industry were saying things like this. A woman, as long as she lives, will remember how she was made to feel at her birth. So just celebrating that moment as being profound for a woman. It's an otherworldly experience. Nothing compares to the privilege of giving life and the responsibility of that. Nothing. Another said, I am the guardian of safety and the witness of your process. And the body, she said quite humbly, is smarter than me. God is totally aware of the miraculous birthing capacity that he has built into a woman's body, a mother's body. He made everything that enables that to happen. And God is the guardian of the safety and the witness of the process of that, even as a midwife is, even as a doctor is. And surely God knows of and is the ultimate first experiencer of the otherworldly privilege of giving life, having given life and birth to everything that is. 
and the responsibility that goes along with that. Women are made in the image of a world universe birthing God. Mothers are. And even as a midwife is with a mother in all of those beautiful ways and holistic ways and some would say granola crunching ways and but in all kinds of beautiful and good ways God is with the mother in that moment wherever that mother is and with all of us his children as well in his withness I just kept thinking about his withness in terms of the withness that I was watching through all of these midwives how God never coerces you or rushes you or pushes things along beyond a pace that you can sustain, that feels right and natural for you. How God doesn't have a schedule that He thinks you ought to be on or a curve that you have to follow all the time. How God doesn't manipulate or overdrug. Now, some of those words are coming from uh, this story out of U.S. medicine and highest cesarean rates, highest epidural rates, highest all these surgeries because of the medical system want to mon- wanting to monetize the birthing process a little too much. But God never manipulates you. God listens to how you feel about the process of what you're birthing, your life and never leaves your side. And God trusts what He's built into your body and your psyche and your spirit and your character and your being. He knows what you are made for, and if that thing is beyond what you think you can do because it's too hard and you can't push that hard or get there on your own, you can. And He's with you, with us. For God, relationship always trumps efficiency and expediency and economics. Because God knows that relationship is what gets you through what you're delivering and through the pain. And God has some very natural other ways of working through the pain and suffering too. It can help you in that regard. Like a midwife, God knows what a human being is capable of because he made you. The psalmist again. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. And we should, you should, because this is your story. Praise God. Because God's witness puts a midwife's or an obstetrician's witness to shame. Nobody is with you more than God is with you. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had you in mind, had settled on you as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. And when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. And then Jesus. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God knew us, you, before the creation of the universe. God will be with you eternally was there in the in-between place where you were born and gestated and knit together in your mother's womb. But for all eternity, and for all eternity, God is with you. I mean, that is significant prenatal and postnatal care. So 
As soon as I typed those words, writing a sermon, I got an email from a friend who had been trying to get pregnant for years and were and now weren't, miscarried, devastated, broken, deeply broken at the loss. They thought for sure this time it was going to work, and it didn't work. As soon as I read the email, I groaned. I hear I'm quoting all these verses about you being with, and now this baby dies, you know, less than 10 weeks old, and what gives, God? You ordained for all the days of this mirror. And then after an hour, and yet... You're, you're not, not with that little life. And what hope is there other than the fact that even in the mystery of this premature fetus's death, uh, you still carry this child. Be with them forever. I guess that's one of those ways that God is with us mysteriously, even though we can't understand. A very ancient way. Entering into the world of a midwife, I heard again and again and again, and this very much applies to anybody in the medical profession who comes alongside this process, this profound and humble understanding that they're coming alongside a greater thing that is, is going to happen, kind of whether they're there or not. For some, that greater thing and is, is, is an idealized, idolized maybe view of womanhood. For others, it's maybe just a scientific thing, an amazingly evolved biological reality that they humbled themselves before. And for others, I trust those of us here, it's something sacred and otherworldly from God. In an interview I did with a midwife a couple weeks ago, a retiring midwife who'd seen a lot of babies born, I asked if, you'd ever come up, if she'd ever come up against situations where she didn't know what to do or couldn't handle it. Now, she has a, the ideal best of both worlds thing, I think. She does her thing in a hospital, and, you know, so you have all of the power and learning and knowledge of Western medicine, hospital medicine there, right alongside this ancient birthing way and the two working together. But she responded this way to the question about coming up against something she couldn't handle. She said, I always come up against stuff I couldn't handle, and I just pull this rope in the wall, and the room fills with people. <laughs> I thought, that's how I'd like to, were I a woman, give birth. She said to the question of coming up against something she couldn't handle, I don't feel like I should be able to do it all. I've never been a believer that medicine knows a lot. Most stuff is literally in God's hands. We didn't know whether, like I didn't know where, what, whether there was a faith background there or something. So as soon as she said God, we all went ding. We'll ask her about that later. Literally in God's hands. Mostly I don't have any control over what happens. I just react to what happens and do the best I can with what happens. It's not like we know everything about birth. That's so far from the truth. You can't even imagine. It's good that people have a lot of faith in us and think we do know everything, but we don't. And those who know the most uh, about the birthing process and medicine and what it means for a child to successfully come into this world, I would imagine, know the best or most deeply that they know very little about the process, I would imagine. from Paul's letter to the Romans where he uses this imagery of a child being born. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. 
In the same way, the Spirit, like a midwife coming alongside you, helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray or what to do or where to go or how to handle this. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know for this couple with this no more baby for you in the middle of it. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. There is glory at the end of all the pain. Trying to find Maddie. There will be glory, we trust, at the end of all that pain when a week from now, God willing, your baby comes into the world. Uh, Tearful, um, life-filling. Hopefully this is who I'm made to be as a mom, as a dad, as a family. Glory. at the end of the pain, at the end of the questions. Presence, relationship with you, glory. God is birthing something through you, even if it's as difficult as, or way more difficult than you think it needs to be. There is something new happening that is being born. We think we know, and we do know. We have great medicine and great learning about how human beings are born, but we don't know what we don't know about childbirth, about our bodies, and about most of life, if we're honest. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts, and you are not God, and His ways are way beyond our ways. And so we need God. They say at Christmas, I know at Christmas, people remember, right? Those who've died, losses, the ones who aren't here now. It's a celebration and this beautiful family thing for so many of us, and yet there's this blue, missing, hurt. The world is not yet as it ought to be, God, feeling. And so we need you to come alongside because we don't know how to do this ourselves, God. And sometimes the pain is inexplicable and unbearable, and we don't know how to push through it. And we need you to come alongside in such a palpable, tangible, and real way to to coach us, to whisper in our ears, to give us confidence that you know what you're doing so that we can do what we need to do and become who we need to become. To hear your spirit say, you can do this. I can't do this. You can do this. I have built into you a capacity to do your life and to be strong enough to bear what you're bearing, to give birth to the new thing that you're becoming. Yes, you can do this more in more ways than you can dream or imagine. You can do this. And where you can't, I will carry you and lift you up and hold you and position you in a way that you can do this. And I, by my spirit, will intercede for you in ways that nobody may see but from an eternal perspective, are critical to what's being born in you and through you. And all of it will happen according to God's, my good purpose, God says. And at the end of it all, the baby will be born. 
the baby was born. The one who breathed the universe and birthed everything was born and died and was reborn and is with you. I will never leave you. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You don't have to be afraid. This pain is not for naught. It is going somewhere. I am going to work it for good. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. I've been here before. Let's pray. God, we do stand in awe of uh, what you've made in a, in a woman, uh, in a human being, this capacity and power and strength to give birth. And then what you've made in a community of with you, alongside of you, doctors and midwives and doulas and family and spouses that come alongside such a beautiful, multifaceted, communal way to bring that child into this world. And how so much of the time it works. And how when it doesn't, you are with us, maybe even more numinously, and, and maybe we see it even more clearly, or maybe not. And that that life was thought about before the creation of the world and will be thought about forever is a profound thing and a very humbling thing. Thank you uh, that this is the kind of God who you are, that you're like, like a midwife. God, be with uh, everyone here now in whatever that withness needs to be. Uh, just psychological encouragement. Uh, I hand up out of a pit. Um, some sense of groundedness and sanity and peace in a crazy time of year. The ability to be a mom or a dad and maintain sanity. To be an employee, to be a member of this community, to be part of a family, to be healthy. pray that you would be with all of us, God with us, in all ways, all the time, and that you'd open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to know you more. And that we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.